Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McCree Lava, and this is The Ethics of Victoria 2, number 3C. Now one thing I've noticed is that we are, at this point, ahead or roughly at the same time chronologically at the start of episode 3 for our Confederate series where we're just acting, you know, moralistic as we, were, as we would be at the end of episode 3 for the other Confederacies. So this may just be episodes 3 and 4. And that way we'll bridge that gap. And we're probably going to see this version of the Confederacy less. However, we will achieve more chronologically uh, while we're playing this one. Uh, one of the reasons for that is going to be because we're just gunning it at top speed. Uh, we may go ahead and test out some economic policies and see if those turn uh, any way in particular. Looks like Italy and the Netherlands are having a crisis over Guinea, or Guiana. Uh, we have autosave set up to be every six months right now. Uh, that's really not necessary for this, so we'll set them up to be yearly. And that way we just don't have to have so many slowdowns. Uh, so we are facing a lot of rebellions, and I guess we've already determined that self-defense is morally defensible, which of course we had to from the very onset, otherwise we wouldn't have had our independence. So we will defend ourselves against these rebels. Uh, I guess the big objective is going to be that we have to do well enough that they no longer wish to rebel. And that could prove to be difficult. Uh, we'll just have to go forth and hope for the best. Oh, looks like there were some rebels in the United States. I'm not entirely sure what they were after. And we're going to just immediately cut down our military funding down to zero again and hopefully pay off our debts in not too long of a time. Alright, so previously we had helped Guatemala. Uh, that was just because they allied us and we determined that it would be uh, immoral to not answer the call of our allies. Since that is kind of just us betraying the whole concept of an alliance. And we're going to try to just encourage our people to want reforms and then ideally to pass those reforms. Our economy, you'll notice, is not doing as well as I would like. Although it isn't doing too terribly poorly either. Uh, we will go ahead and encourage some clerks in Virginia just since they are filling up pretty quickly all of their factories. And another thing to uh, take notice of, uh, first of all I guess we'll look at the crisis just because that's a current event. It looks like Italy has the support of Russia and Germany. The Netherlands doesn't have anyone's support just yet. France is leaning towards them though and so is the United Kingdom. Now the fact that they've added cut the Netherlands down to size seems as though they're not going to get a peaceful resolution. Although we'll see what ends up happening. I think the UK was probably going to join the Dutch. And the French may, but they also may not. If it's just the British and the Dutch, then they will almost certainly lose. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that as it progresses. I also unfortunately... Com okay, my train of thought was that we actually have more industrial score right now than the other two confederacies have well actually now that i think about it okay that actually okay it's not really as good of a point as i had thought it would have been uh since we have as much industry as the other confederacies had at the end of their session at the beginning of ours however then you think chronologically again and that's actually basically the same thing Alright, so what are we going to do? 37% of our people are liberal, 20% are socialists, 21% are our voters, and 37% still. So we'll just go ahead and pass universal suffrage since it is the most uh, wanted reform. Not as, not though, okay, although it will not be the most effective reform in order to get things passed. Uh, North Germany's declared war on Prussia, which makes quite a lot of sense. It was kind of odd that they existed at all. Uh, and they will hopefully be able to bounce back. I do just have a soft spot in my heart for Germany and Victoria too. So we are going to hope that things go well for them. We also have an additional national focus, so that's very nice. We'll go ahead and put that into one of our largest factory states, or our, I guess, most our state with the most factories open so that will be 
Well, it looks like it'll be Georgia. And we'll go ahead and put it to clerks just to try to get people to, uh, well, be clerks and to get these factories to maintain their profitability because it looks like they're really just on the knife edge. And that's really a big problem with being low in prestige in the early game. Now, a few of the things that we can do to support them are to not really tax the rich and to not really tax the poor. And we're already doing those things. Uh, we'll go ahead and let the poor become very... Oh, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that. That was probably an immoral choice because it was probably... Well, I mean, see, I don't want to make any big moral claims as to whether or not capitalism is a good principle or not. Because, I mean, obviously we are living in an era of just amazing technological progress, which arguably could be done, or could only be the case because people who are successful are able to keep succeeding. So that is definitely an interpretation to have, and I almost want to say that that is maybe the right one, but I mean it's the right one within bounded, bounded categories, within a bounded space. For instance, capitalism, well, let's see. Not nipping at successful people is... Okay, nipping at successful people and limiting their success is not moral, we'll say. However, I guess you could also say that, I mean, we are the, we are the version of the Confederacy that banned slavery. So the question then is... At what point are we saying that something is akin to slavery? And at what point are we saying that it isn't or that we don't care? So, that's a pretty difficult question to just kind of take on all of a sudden, but I guess that's the risk of this. I suppose the thing is that so long as we're not unduly limiting the success of the rich, it doesn't hurt our society in order to, or by helping the poor. And quite frankly, I guess it's overly simplistic to say that everybody earns everything that they have. And yet at the same time, it really, it really does come down to what can they provide for society. Because if we were to tax the rich 100%, which we can't even do, uh, we wouldn't get any factories, and that would lead our people to be in a greater degree of poverty and to be more likely to just be, uh, let's say, subjugated by the United States. So there's definitely an extent to which practicality must trump uh, this sort of thing, especially when it's morally hazy at best. And I mean, I would say that it has to be morally hazy, otherwise the solution... No, um, otherwise the problem would have seemed more distinct earlier in the world's history just as a natural uh, result of it being more fundamental, we'll say. So that's probably not the safest claim to make, and I honestly, well, you could argue that we're not really even making a claim with that statement. So that's going to be difficult to handle. Um, so what is the practical result of this? That, that's probably something we can answer. The practical result is going to be that we're going to try very hard to tax the poor as little as we can and still maintain an effective state. Uh, we might not even need full administration, in part because we aren't taxing our bureaucrats at 100%. And we're very, uh, we're only paying our soldiers a very minimal amount. Alright, what is this? The Kingdom of West Morocco has gone bankrupt. So that can't be ideal for them. Although they are civilized and all of these provinces are states. Which is an interesting thing that happens uh, if you actually release these colonial areas. As a sort of client state. So perhaps we should have done that. Uh, although we couldn't have made it to Africa anyway, so let's not worry too much about that. Anyway, though, so we're just going to do what practical things we can to ease the burdens upon the poor without artificially limiting our state to the best of our ability. And we will see that as a sort of virtuous aim. Uh, if we compare it to the other confederacies, and really just my playstyle typically, 
Uh, I usually just tax the poor as much as I possibly can simply because they have more money in an aggregate. And yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So there's really usually no moral sort of consideration to it, and I'm not really sure how successful we'll even be with this uh, take on it right now. Uh, we will go ahead and encourage clerks instead of craftsmen in a few instances, really in most instances, just because we want our factories to be as profitable as they possibly can be, uh, just because that helps the economy in a general way. And not only that, although mainly that, uh, it also does help out the clerks. They will be on a higher socioeconomic scale or a sort of station in our society, so that is good for them in a way. It brings people out of poverty. That's a good way of phrasing that. So it brings people out of poverty, and we are encouraging clerks in all of the states that we're actually using our national foci. And we are only 13th in industry score. Tennessee is being a major player at that. What will be interesting is to see how industrialized we end up being compared to other places. Alright, uh, let's see, so lockout. Capitalists in one of our states have called a lockout following a period of intensifying labor conflicts in the area. Workers have been informed by management that no one is welcome back to work while union, sympathize, while union sympathies still run high among the employed. Local police have expressed support for the move, citing a long series of disturbances at the factory, some even bordering on sabotage. Well, obviously we don't want to encourage sabotage, although, hmm, I guess we could upset, well, okay. Hmm, that's difficult if we actually really consider what we're doing, which is something I haven't really done for a very long time in this game. So, let's see, what do we really need to look at? We don't have any unemployment subsidies. We don't have any pensions. So these people, if they're kicked out, will just kind of be kicked out. I mean, hmm. Where is this even occurring? Florida. If we were to look at Florida and actually consider the situation to an extent beyond that, which the game probably it really allows, uh, there's only one factory there. So if all those people were kicked out, then they would really not be able to do anything else. I mean, I guess they could go back to being, you know, just random marsh workers and things. Marsh workers. Uh, they could go back to being laborers, essentially. Or farmers, or, or really just smallhold farmers or things like that. So that's obviously not an optimal circumstance, although if they are... If they are sabotaging, then that is also not ideal. So I guess we will not say that the, oh, hmm, I guess we'll not say that the capitalists can't do that. I really need to stop thinking in negatives, that's kind of annoying. The capitalists are allowed to close down their factory. And in a way, our state is kind of predicated upon the idea that only the capitalists can say that, not because of any moral thing, simply because our ruling party currently is one that is laissez-faire. So, if we're going to bound ourselves a little bit further, we are a democratic state, and the electorate has said that they want laissez-faire economics, would it then be a betrayal of morality to act in a way that doesn't respect the wishes of the electorate? All right, screams can be heard from a workplace in one of our in one of our states where socialist agitators have turned an ongoing labor conflict from bad to worse. Local capitalists are appalled at the liberties these the liberties these revolutionaries allow themselves with regard to how, when, and where they preach their revolutionary ideology, and are considering forming a citizen guard should the situation escalate further. Hmm, we will not recommend our citizens to form protection rackets. People become more socialist. Anything to stave off the Red Hydra. People become more reactionary. Mainly the rich. In fact, only the rich. Well, those are interestingly phrased responses. We will not recommend our citizens to form protection rackets. 
really, should we be getting involved, I guess is the big question there. Or anything to stave off the Red Hydra. Obviously, we shouldn't be actively encouraging that. That is something for the police if it turns into civil disorder. And if it turns into a revolutionary sort of thing, then that's why we have our military, in order to defend the interests of the state. If they are such a popular ideology, and they do manage to preach uh, their ideology so very well, then what will happen is they will win the election, and then we'll have to act in a way more actively concerning or uh, more actively considering the wishes of the workers and take a less pro-capitalist stance. Which would be morally harder to justify. Uh, we will go ahead and be pacifist again. What's going on? All sorts of things, apparently. Oh, China won against the Heavenly Kingdom. Ooh, Liberia. Oh, okay. So the United States removed Liberia from the United Kingdom sphere. That's somewhat interesting. Um, let's see. We won't really take a stance on free trade versus protectionism. And we can probably start doing something of a progressive tax rate. So that that will slowly shift it. As our capitalists get more money, we will slowly shift society more towards keeping the poor from being in just some sort of abject poverty. And hopefully that will be an overall positive thing for our state. We'll let the chips just fall where they will. Really, uh, we're not using tariffs to prop up our economy any, so it doesn't really matter too much what happens. And as much as us actively tariffing uh, imports would help our economy stay more localized, a big issue is that we probably are selling quite a bit of material abroad. So as much as we want to avoid overdependence on foreign goods, we can't really stop ourselves from taking on an overdependence of foreign markets. And that is really the crux of what causes factories to fall, although admittedly it's a two-part thing. Uh, we really should be trying to get more in the way of unemployment subsidies and things like that, since a lot of our industry is kind of just collapsing in Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. Other places are doing much better with that, and that's, you know, very nice for them, although obviously not universal. So I guess from an ultimately moralistic stance, I would say that it may be better for uh, or for our people if they had those unemployment subsidies, but I guess this way they can go out and seek uh, seek new employment and just keep working to the profit of everybody. All right, so let's see. Squalid slum. The reeking putrid stench welling out of the old house smells like mold and rotting timber. There isn't a soul about, save an old drunkard who scurries out through a back door at the first hint of light shining in through the suit, through a suit-covered window. God alone knows for how long this house has been standing here, but its dilapidated state paints a clear picture of what our nation has become in the past few decades. Poverty is becoming ever more widespread, and housing like this is standard for far too many of our nation's poor and downtrodden. Infinitely worse, these unsanitary hovels are an ample breeding ground for filth and disease. Well then. Uh, if we call for a par parliamentary investigation, that'll get us about 5% more liberals, which won't really help matters. Uh, I guess it might push us over in the direction of more social reforms, which is ultimately the objective. Uh, in order to get rid of that. Uh, seek local support for the reform might help. And saying we don't see the problem obviously just hinders things. So since that's not a guaranteed solution, we will call for that parliamentary investigation. And we'll see how that plays out. Although obviously it looks as though we did not manage to get enough people into the upper house to be liberal to actually make any sort of movement towards that. So that's unfortunate for now. It may change later on, although it doesn't really seem like it. 
and we'll just kind of continue to trod forward. Railroad levels have advanced. It looks like we lost a little bit of money with that somehow. Oh, and we really need to get Phenomenology. We probably should have done that a little while ago. Alright, uh, taking a look back at the wider world. Uh, nothing really too much has changed so far, uh, other than the fact that Ottomans have Croatia, but they had that at the end of the last one. Alright, extra, extra, grand strike in Richmond. Workers demand higher wages. Extra, extra, grand strike. Alright, a socialist newspaper named Forward has been published in Richmond. It reports about various strikes, current news, and socialist movements and politics both close to home and abroad. Well then. Uh, okay, this really just affects who becomes more socialist. Um, we may as well just let the poor be more socialist, although I guess it doesn't really matter either way. The question really is, do we want to deal with the economics of our country all throughout time? And the answer is really not that much. However, I do want us to pass some social reform, so it would be helpful for that. So we will go ahead and become more socialist in the short term. Oh, that does mean that we'll have to deal with economic issues moving forward. But I do think that it will be for the best for our country to pass as many reforms as we can. Uh, just to give people as good of a life opportunity as we're able to. The main thing being we cannot sacrifice growth for that. However, since we can encourage migration, we're getting significantly fewer immigrants than the United States. And that's problematic, so we do need to pass more reforms just in order to be more successful in that. Alright, union busting. Uh, capitalists in one of our states have begun employing union busting tactics to end what they describe as the scourge of organized labor by employing professional infiltrators to get under the skin of the state's labor movements the capitalists hope to be able to sow discontent among union rank and file. Alright, well that's obviously not good, so we'll just turn that down immediately. And that bothers the rich, but honestly, if they're out, you know, filling revolts with provocateur, or, uh, provocateurs, then we can't really be supporting that. I mean, where does that stop? Alright, so that all considered, we already have the most prestige gang techs we can get, and nothing's really happening. Uh, we aren't getting any events to go discover the North Pole or the South Pole or anything. Luckily, the United States is really just kind of, I don't want to say kept on a leash, but they are sort of being kept on a leash by our alliance with the British. So that is very good news in its own way. And other than that, the world is really just peaceful. We aren't seeming to ever really get to the point where we have enough factories open to keep everybody employed and that is potentially a large issue oh north germany declared war on france all right we covered the entire city me and the girls split up met at the corner of main street and third and then went off to each try to cover a block or two it was hard work but i remember it as a happy time confederate suffragettes have undertaken a leaflet campaign in one of our states in order to gain traction for their cause all around the city, women can be seen wearing placards and handing out leaflets asking for support for a whole host of suffragette causes, from property to marriage to domestic law to the vote and beyond. Well, let's go ahead and support that. And let's see what we can pass with that. We can give our people secret ballots, and they really, really want secret ballots. So we'll go ahead and do that doesn't really help the suffragettes any, but uh, it is a reform nonetheless. Alright, the development of liberal and feminist thought during the past years have caused women in the CSA to form suffragette organizations demanding that the state accord them legal equality with men. All across the CSA, women are leaving their primary roles as housewives and caretakers demanding the right to vote, to work, and to own property. I guess if only there was popular support for this. We won't pass any reforms until, I guess, the game allows us, obviously. Yeah, that's kind of a dumb thing to say. But we'll see how it plays out. So, meanwhile, North Germany is attacking the French. The French are defending against the, both the Germans and the United Kingdom. 
and both the French and the British have a very small hold or a small presence in Africa. And it doesn't look like any conflict has really gone over there, and it definitely seems as though the French are not in a winning position in this war. Oh, so there we go. Alsace-Lorraine has been liberated. Germany has formed. It looks like they really were able to bounce back. So props to them, I suppose. Meanwhile, the Americans are up to 92 brigades, which is not entirely the best thing for us. And, of course, they are going to maintain cores on all of our lands until basically the end of time. They've also cored Sonora. So that's kind of interesting. Guess Manifest Destiny went a little further in that and only that regard. They also do have Canada or uh, Alaska. So who knows? They probably will want to come back and take all of our lands from us. Although they haven't yet, and I guess we should be appreciative of the of that fact. Our tax efficiency went up somewhat. Our research points are higher. We can go ahead and pass a reform, and we'll just pass... Ooh, usually I would just pass the most popular one. Ooh. We'll go with basic school systems. Uh, since it is the most popular, and honestly it is one of the two that I usually go for. The only reason I uh, usually go for healthcare first is to just get as many people as possible. And while that is a positive thing, um, I guess there is something to be said about giving people the right to be educated, really, I suppose. Meanwhile, Spain declared war on Morocco. They're just going to roll over there and take a lot of things. So yeah, uh, we are running a slight deficit. We're still pretty modest with our budget. We could tax the rich a little bit more, and I don't think that we would be very harmed by that. It looks like, oh, France is backing Poland in a crisis. Italy is backing the Russians, which is an interesting statement in itself. That means the Russians are no longer a great power. When, oh wait, wait a minute, what? Okay, so the Italians just aided the Russians and the Russians are defending themselves. Okay, so right now it's France on the side of Poland. I don't think... Yeah, Germany doesn't want to support France at all because they don't want to support Poland. So France is probably just going to give up on this dream in a second. And yes, they had to dismantle some of their fortifications. Spain managed to take this really ugly bit of Morocco, which it seems like they always do in Victoria too. And uh, yeah, that's basically all of that. Our factories are continuing to not really perform all that well in a few key areas. Let's see, revolt risk-wise, there are some small probabilities that we will get revolts, really just in Florida. We should probably just go garrison Florida. Uh, other than that, nationality-wise, it looks like pretty much a, just a bunch of people are becoming Confederates. It used to be about 50% Afro-American, 50% er, Dixie. Now it's really skewed. Either that's because of population growth or... Well, just people assimilating, who's to say? Uh, a new daily with no shame about its political leanings has been incorporated in Richmond. The Confederate Red Star, official party organ for the Confederate Socialist Party, the Red Star publishes deeply moving social commentary, seldom without picturesque little reports on the conditions of working men and women across the world. The Red Star stands, or so it claims, for international solidarity, workers' rights, unionism, and class struggle on a broad democratic and socialist basis. So, are the rich or the poor going to read that? Hmm. Well, the rich typically do like to just kind of read those sorts of things, but I guess we'll say it's the poor since it relates to them, although I don't think that's super accurate to reality. Nevertheless, we'll just let that go on. Uh, it looks like our capitalists are successful enough at creating railroads, and that's very nice. Once again, no forming protection rackets, or at least not with government encouragement. And we just kind of continue forward into the future. We can only raise three groups of forces of soldiers, so we're not going to bother with that. 
the U.S. finally managed to get Liberia into their sphere, so good for you, America. Whose sphere are we in? Are we in a sphere of influence? We are not. Who are we influenced by? By the United States, tremendously. It looks like they're just trying to keep us out of other people's spheres. That's interesting. It keeps us basically a free agent. Alright, Mayday Parade. The red banners flutter before the winds and people of all ages come out to watch. As socialists, communists, union members, and workers of all ages come together in a protest march all across the country, commemorating the deaths of several demonstrators at the Chicago Haymarket Massacre in 1886. With... Oh, wait. Okay. Interesting that we would be... Interesting. Okay. Uh, do 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 uh, while an annually returning celebration in almost every city in the CSA, this year's incarnation has been particularly successful in one of our states, where an upsurge in socialist militancy and consciousness can be expected. So we can either basically tell them not to meet, or we can just support it. We'll support it because we do have public meetings, so we kind of have to if we're not being, I guess, liars about our beliefs. And if there's anything that's immoral, I guess it would have to be lying about what you believe and what you believe and what you hold up as ideal. Okay, so North Carolina's economy is basically collapsing horrendously, and it looks like we're actually in just a tremendous economic downturn generally. So what do we do about that? Uh, let's see. Where are our largest states? Our largest uh, factory operating or our states operating the most factories all right well they're all doing somewhat incredibly poorly so it might be very good if a socialist sort of rebellion pops up or not rebellion god no not a rebellion but if they manage to organize enough to win an election that'd probably be good we will tax the rich a bit more uh, we'll tax them at 30%, we'll tax the middle class at twin at um, yeah, 25, and the poor we will drop to not actually much, just 1%. I'll try to pay off our loans. Uh, so that isn't ideal. We could probably tighten the purse strings of the government a little bit and drop our poor taxes like that. Although now, of course, some of our wealthy are not doing nearly so well. So we'll just drop administrative funding even further. Let's see. Uh, we should probably give our people subsidies since everyone's getting out of work right now. Uh, looks like we can't enact women's suffrage because we past that and that made them slightly less popular and we'll just make sure that we have this social spending in place because a lot of people are unemployed all right so they're not really getting the best unemployment benefits but they are getting unemployment benefits and that'll hopefully keep a few people out of just tremendous unbelievable un unbearable poverty we hope and yeah so that isn't very good just outright. We do, well, hopefully they're bouncing back. Georgia is really doing poorly. They were hit very hard by that. It looks as though every time we do get a new project, though, it is immediately funded. So perhaps that is to say that we should tax the rich higher and the poor to a lesser degree. We'll tax them at 1%, and that seems to be sufficient. Although, really, 50% taxes is a little extreme. So there, that should be okay. And then as we make more money, we'll go ahead and fund our administration back up. Alright, now an unfortunate aspect of the fact that, I mean, we are funded off of taxes basically entirely is that we'll never really be able to just not tax our people. So we will have to constantly be figuring out who gets taxed and who doesn't. Alright, so Campaign for Married Women's Property Act. I think it's fairly safe to say that this is just a rather banal thing where people are trying to get more rights. We'll go ahead and let them do that. And yeah, we'll just move forward with that. Looks like we can pass some more reforms. 
people really want their kids to be educated, that makes, you know, a really good amount of sense. So we'll keep encouraging the school system to just get more and more successful and larger and hopefully more, I guess, equitable. Well, not equitable, that's a weird word. Uh, hopefully, though, we'll just give more people opportunities. A larger and wider slew of our people will get more opportunities. We will go ahead and get central bank. Our central banks, it looks like America is dealing with anarcho-liberals, which is kind of interesting. They've managed to maintain a conservative ruling party for basically forever, and so have we, so I guess we can't really judge. And yeah, that's basically that. Our socialists are now 29% of the people. Somehow that's 30% of the electorate. I guess because people who are primary culture are the only people who are allowed to vote. So who is not primary culture? African Americans aren't primary culture. We haven't given them the vote. That's interesting. I mean, I guess considering we are the Confederate States of America, that's not terribly surprising. So yeah, ooh, and Texans even. They're just an accepted culture. So Dixie and Texan, we don't even really acknowledge the existence of Afro-American. And neither does the North. So that's interesting. Uh, Austro-Hungary declared war on Italy. That's a very different thing to focus on. So let's see what they do. Alright, diplomatically. Uh, well, I don't think they're going to win that. In fact, they're going to lose that. Uh, who actually declared the war? That's a really interesting question. Austro-Hungaria declared it with the support of the French to get back Istria. And they're fighting a large number of powers. I guess the French might be able to pull it off for them. They have 176 brigades. The Italians have 89. The Russians have 161. And they have 81. So it's actually fairly equivalent. The Ottomans, though, are actually a, cons are actually a major power, it looks like. And what is this? They have Hejaz as a satellite? That's kind of cool. I never really see that. Interesting. Uh, let's see. People don't really want even better schools still. Do we go ahead and improve the lot of the workers? Well, we're going to have to because it is the most popular reform, and that's kind of how we've been basing these decisions. Maybe people will want health care more later on. Uh, looking at our projects, they are still constantly getting all the money they need. We don't have any electric gear. Hmm. So that's interesting. We will go ahead and not really focus on our army techs right now. We'll just focus on commerce, things like that. What we might want to do is uh, buy a bunch of trade goods that we would need to stockpile and then sell to our capitalists later on. I'm not entirely sure how good of an idea that is, but it is an idea that we could do. Uh, I probably won't, just because if we are a laissez-faire country, then market speculation is really not the place for government. There's really no way to have both of those views simultaneously. Uh, we could build a series of forts, but that's very expensive, and we are just outrageously fiscally conservative. I guess, really, you could make the claim that what I have strewn as morally good has just ended up kind of de facto becoming a sort of capitalist fiscal conservatism since I guess the alternative, well, I mean, there's really not much else you can say about that. What we could do, I mean, really, okay, let's really think about that. Because let's say our thought was that the highest moral objective we could achieve would be to get our people as much stuff as we could irrespective of where it came from. Well, the natural end to that line of thinking is fascism. Because we would say, 
how do we make it so that the poor have all that they can have and how do we make it so that the rich have all that they can have and the middle class have all that they can have and the best way to do that would be to attack other countries and force them to pay war reparations to us and if we were to do that then we could fund our country entirely off of war reparations and not tax anybody at all which is potentially an interesting thing to do uh, union busting, we're not going to do that because that is people's organizational freedoms. Uh, so yeah, the socialists definitely have the right to organize. And our government is really just going to ignore that while they're peaceful. And that is kind of just straightforward. If they do win, then maybe they can pass more reforms taking care of people's health and stuff. And we'll just kind of roll with that. Tax efficiency tax efficiency just shot up considerably so we'll drop taxes on the middle class to a considerable degree now people say a lot that a successful middle class is one of the mainstays of a successful country I would like to believe that but I don't really know very much about economics to be entirely honest with you and I really don't know very much about economics in the context of this game. Looks like Austro-Hungary is becoming just a terribly ugly country. Uh, should we get National Banking Act? Maybe. Let's not. Uh, we should probably sign the Geneva Convention. Just because it is morally right to do. Why let war be more disastrous than it needs to be? It's not like we're actually planning on fighting wars anyway. And we'll get semi-automization and advanced metallurgy when we get the opportunity. Uh, once 1890 rolls around, I don't believe that opens up any more of these techs, and it doesn't. Does it open up anything here? Not really. So we'll probably be able to finish up our industry, culture, and maybe commerce trees. What kind of tech group do we have, actually? We are traditional academia, which I believe doesn't give any bonuses or debuffs. We'll go ahead and keep not interrupting people's rights. And is Romania still fighting Austro-Hungary? It looks like they are, and they're also fighting France. It looks like France didn't manage to get out of their war, because I guess they wanted something. They wanted to humiliate the Russians. Well, that's not going to go very well, just by the looks of it. And they don't seem to want to accept a white peace, or maybe the Russians just aren't offering one. I wonder if the Italians... Okay, so the Italians lost their cores on Nice, Nice, and Savoy because they took their deal to uh, take over lands from the Austrians with the support of the French in, in, uh, in exchange for some lands. And those lands, it appears, are becoming French fairly quickly. So what's this? Romanian forces are occupying France. That's kind of interesting. They have a full 24 brigades to the Russian 179 and the Austrian 12. So if they had just stuck to fighting Austria, they might have pulled it off, but I don't think they'll pull this off how they're doing it now. Which is unfortunate, especially if you are Romanian. We'll tax the poor even less, and I guess one of our objectives is going to be to get poor tax down to zero. We'll probably end up with less poor than any of the other confederacies, and maybe that's going to end up just being one of our objectives. Uh, let's see. This is that same event again. Worker strikes and various things. Uh, it does sound biased, so we'll go ahead and call it out for that, but that just means it'll be very supported among the poor. We'll get some advanced metallurgy, and we'll go ahead and enact women's suffrage. So there we go. That doesn't really seem to have changed the voters' ideologies, although I'm not sure how much that will affect uh, the actual outcomes of elections and things like that. Uh, we're still not getting our automobile factory because we have no electric gear. And I don't know, it doesn't look like we're really opening up any new projects in a lot of places that need them. So maybe we should be taxing the rich a little less, although they're not even creating projects. Oh. God, oh wait, never mind. I thought it was that uh, this was stopping them from building new factories in Georgia, but it looks like they just don't want to, or they don't realize they need to yet. 
Uh, the British are calling us to arms. We will go ahead and proceed to join them in that. Although we don't really have very much in the way of capability at helping them. So, I mean, we're doing our part. We'll go ahead and let our people lose their militancy. It's totally fine for them to be conscientious of various things going on, although there's no real reason for them to be militant about it. Uh, what's our tax efficiency actually at? Let's find that out. It'd be under our administrative efficiency, and that is affected by our administrative spending. So, if we look, we're actually still at 100%, so we could definitely make the argument that our budget is bloated. So we'll cut administrative funding a bit, and we'll use that to drop taxes on the middle class, since the middle class are the bureaucratic class. Oh, cool, so great wars have been discovered by the Russians. So it's probably decently likely that we'll get into a great war at some point or another. And we'll just have to deal with the repercussions of that when they come. Now, some nostalgic romanticism. It's a pretty human trait. Don't know how realistic it is that it was discovered in the 1890s. I'm pretty sure there were Romans who felt that way. At any rate, we are still building up factories and things. People do still have... Uh, what's the word? Unemployment pensions. So that's good. Or unemployment subsidies. Let's take a look at what am I trying to find. Migrations. We are getting a larger share of the migrant pool, so that is good. Uh, and that really does just mean that we're passing reforms successfully. So hopefully we pass enough reforms and, you know, at least manage to hold out against the United States and their just irrepressible wave of growth. And I guess we don't really have to worry too much about a lot of things uh, economy-wise. We don't really need immigrants in the sense that we already have people who are unemployed and uh, who are having enough trouble getting a job that we don't really need to make it exasperate situations with more uh, more immigration and whatnot. We'll get assembly lines, and then from there we'll roll on into commerce, and then we'll roll from there into culture, finish up the culture tree, and then once that's done, we will, I guess, go focus on army techs, and then later navy techs. The United States is up to 112 brigades, so maybe there might need to be some sort of more active focus on self-defense. Uh, what that will actually look like is hard to say. And we are taxing the poor as little as we can at this current point. We can pass a reform. What do the people want? 8% want good school systems. Let's see... Good school system seems to be the number one thing that the voters want, and that the people want generally. Guess you guys are getting good schools. Alright, and that'll help our education out, which will get us quicker text, which will help us more rapidly uh, create just a better state. So that's all good. And the uh, massive crisis seems to be dying down at least somewhat. As our industrial technologies improve, we should find it easier to keep factories solvent. So that is also helpful. We finally did manage to get this electric gear factory after who knows how long. Oh wait, no, we were actually waiting for our automobile factory. Well, the electric gear factory wasn't doing too well because we don't have access to the rare resources that we would have needed. And that's okay, it is a little unfortunate, but it is okay. So at this point, uh, this version of the Confederacy is definitely losing in a prestige, industry, and military power sort of sense. Uh, at this point, that's an unavoidable conclusion. We're just simply not going to be a great power through our actions. What we might be is a good power which is a distinction we're probably going to have to draw pretty soon before we have to admit that this campaign is a failure. And I guess uh, the way that we will determine success for this campaign for our Confederacy of Good is going to be that we have the largest possible 
percentage of our people rich, the largest possible percentage of our people middle class, and the smallest possible poor. Uh, the best way to make the least people poor is really to just keep keep taxes low and to keep them so they can, you know, become employed in various places. So it's kind of two kind of contradictory goals, so we will have to measure those back and forth. We will tax the rich a little bit more because we are in a deficit. In fact, we'll stop taxing them so much we will actually lower our administrative funding a little bit. And we are still maintaining 100% administrative efficiency throughout all of our states. And really, I guess, what do bureaucrats really provide a state? We'll drop their funding down to, well, 50% and use those savings well I guess the savings are gone we aren't really making very much from our people tax efficiency is 57 percent if we were to jump this up it wouldn't change alright so we'll keep it at 50 percent hmm alright well, we'll see how it goes. The rich are doing very well. A lot of them are getting their luxury needs met. And that's very nice for them. Maybe the Olympics will come up. I'm not sure what odds, what the odds are that we will actually be able to join in the Olympics, since we might just be bypassed over it. Although I think since we're at peace and we are a secondary power, we should be at least invited to the Olympics. Secret police, that's not really a super moralistic thing to have, but I guess there we go. Bunch of tax efficiency things if we go for market regulations. We have a national tragedy, which kind of sucks. And we are still at war. A war that's not really going anywhere, because it doesn't seem like the British are really doing anything about it. Well, I guess this is the moment where we could and arguably should go help our allies. So we could build a navy. We could build a considerable navy. We're not going to build that large of a navy, though. What we will do is we'll build two groups of steam transports. We will rally them over in Florida. And we will go park this navy over in Norfolk. Just since we don't really need to bring that entire portion of our navy if we do end up fighting this. So, do we dismiss our undermanned brigades? Not yet. Uh, what we will do, though, is we won't take them into the war. We'll just have to create an army based off of actually manned brigades. Which might be somewhat difficult. Alright, so we'll take over, or we'll take with it an artillery or two. So we're going to have a considerable portion of our military force involved in this expedition. Which is somewhat dangerous, although hopefully the British will have our back much as we had theirs. The Boer War is going negatively, so we should probably do our part once our navy really comes together. And we might just go once there are only five groups of ships, which would be quicker. Although that does risk that the Boers might think that we are a pushover and something that they can take over or fight a battle against. So it may prove even better to just hold on and wait until we can load up all of our forces at once. And then we'll just take the collective group over. And that should be doable. Alright, it looks like our economy is actually doing very well at this point. Uh, we'll celebrate that by taxing the poor even less. And then once the poor are no longer taxed, the middle class can no longer be taxed. And uh, then after that, we will probably just try as much as we can to not tax the rich. Uh, we'll do whatever we can about this smallpox epidemic because, yeah, obviously that's the moral course, I would say. Hard really to make an argument against keeping people alive from smallpox. And we'll just rush on over and go help our British allies. It's interesting that they don't have any soldiers whatsoever in South Africa. 
They're all slightly further north, I suppose. So, you know, we are actually fighting more wars than I would have anticipated. Although, and really, how... M well, okay, because here's the thing. E the last war we also fought was a war of just territorial ambition of our allies. So we could ask the question, well, just how moral is it for us to be taking over countries and things for our allies? And obviously that's not an easy question to answer. Uh, we are saying there's just faith and one faith and only the faith. Uh, you could make your arguments about whether or not that's moral, but it is called moralism, so that's a really cheap answer. And, and really just kind of a, a cop-out on my part to not really make a stance on that. Can we not attack them? What's going on? Okay, there we go. Alright, so we'll do the same thing. Uh, what I was saying, though, was can we really make the moral stance that it is just for us to send our troops over to help another country's colonial ambitions when we wouldn't even do that for our own? And I guess the only defense I have against that is we gave them our word that we would. And I feel like that's a very strong defense. Since... Yeah, I mean, we gave them our word, anything else would be dishonest, and look, they ended up making a white piece anyway. So, we did our part. It didn't come to blows, we lost a few men just due to attrition, for all we know, they really liked it in Transvaal, and they decided to stay with the Boers. Really, I mean, we could make up whatever story we want to, maybe they were killed by insurgents. Honestly, the game doesn't get into it that far. Uh, let's see, one faith and only one faith. You know, it's probably better off if we were pluralistic, just to admit that everyone has the right, at least, to have their views. Oh, well. Conservative and reactionary parties are doing their thing. Uh, our people are mainly Dixie. Religion, everyone's Protestant, basically. So I guess it really doesn't make much difference if we discriminate on religion or not, although it probably really does for those 0.6% of the population who are of religious minorities. So, I don't know. I guess I guess we can get into the argument of whether or not they have some sort of moral right to expect their religion to be actively, I guess, encouraged by the country that they are moving to. You could make really, hmm, once again, that's one of those things where it's not a clear-cut moral argument. Uh, historically, if we look at places like Europe, uh, they basically came to the conclusion after the Reformation that it was up to the ruler of whatever country to determine that. And then if we're a democracy and we follow that, then we could make the argument that it's really what the people decide, but then you get to counterpoints such as, well, what about the Nazis and their whole thing about, well, they don't have any right to demand anything, even treatment like they're, you know, even something, even animals. Like, people treat animals better than the Nazis treated tons of people. So, obviously, we don't want to go totally down that route because then that's obviously just probably the closest situation to like universal immorality that we could come up with however at the same time well okay that's a can of worms this whole thing is actually a can of worms and very intense religious not even religious but religious partially in the sense of well when we're asked if we should make our people be religious uh, so yeah, that's obviously an example of where it gets religious. Uh, also, political in the sense of is capitalism correct or is socialism correct? Really, this game is not just a simulator of markets. It's also a simulator of morality. And, I mean, I guess that was really the, the thought behind the series in general, but man, did I underestimate just how much we would end up having to question if we were going to be legitimate and honest with what we're doing. Which is really the whole point. And that's actually very weird how difficult at least I am finding it to play this game in a way that is morally good. It turns out that's a much more ambiguous phrase 
than I would have thought, but perhaps that's just because I haven't really thought about it too much. Which is interesting. Like, I mean, I had a really straightforward idea of what we could do that was just evil, more or less, which was just, eh, let's just go keep everyone else down. Which really, I guess you could argue, would be uh, keeping down the capitalists to a large degree, or keeping down the most successful members of our state. Because why would they work harder if they don't get any benefits from that? And that would, you know, sort of spiral. So there's an argument for that. Hey, look, we're finally getting this automobile factory. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what do our people want? What do our voters want? Our voters want 12-hour workdays. Our people also want that. I'm not sure who I would settle with between voters, which is, you know, just Confederates, and our people entirely, which is Confederates, Texans, and African Americans. And that's, that's a question that'll be weird to have to answer if we get to that point. At any rate, we've managed to hit an hour, and that was a very interesting hour, I think, at least for me to go through it. I've never actually really... I mean, I guess we're role-playing, in a way. Although not really, in just as much of a way. Uh, we're still number 11, ranked among different societies. It doesn't look like our industrial score has gone up all that much. Uh, we will go ahead and call it here. I'll go ahead and overlay the resigna uh, resignation the resignation screen, and we'll see just how much our factories have improved. I think we were at 35 factories, and I don't know what percent of our population were factory workers. Uh, right now, though, 18% are laborers, which is a different thing. 10% are craftsmen, and almost 2% are clerks. So, it is interesting. We're also getting a lot of people to be Dixie. And some very small groups of people are not getting any of their needs met. And that's obviously very problematic. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, probably just people working in factories that are running out of money and can't pay their workers. But who's really to say? The United States is number third in the world, so us, you know, acting just as decent moral human beings is definitely working out better for the United States. And you know, that'll be an interesting thing. I'll combine and compare the total scores of all the countries in the world and determine not just, and that'll be a very fun thing, not just what is better for our country, but what is better for the world. If our country acting only moralistically turns out to be better for the world than our country acting pragmatically, then that's an interesting discovery I wouldn't have really put together before this and I think it'll almost certainly perform better than the absolutely just evil tear everyone down confederacy for obvious reasons all right at any rate thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe if you think this is interesting let me know if you think we should be taking this in some other directions or you have any ideas of what actually constitutes a moral course of action for a nation uh, that's honestly any insight would be interesting Thank you again for watching. Have a great day.